Today I'm talking to Victoria from Raw Vegan SE and we'll talk about raw vegan challenges because it can be challenging to change our way of eating and in particular if it's so different from what we are used to in the past. So we both have a lot of experience with raw foods. I've been raw vegan for over four years and Victoria has been enjoying this lifestyle even for over eight years now. She has a really interesting background as well. And she has been a professional badminton player, if I understood that correctly. And she was also working in as a fashion model for some time. So I'm so excited to meet her and we will invite her now. And yeah, we talk a bit about our journeys and how our beginnings went and then Hello. dive into some common raw vegan challenges and how to overcome them. Hi, Victoria. Hello. Hi, nice to see you. You too. How are you doing you today? Do. I'm doing fine. I am in Italy right now in, in Tuscan and we have amazing weather here and, uh, oh. and uh, <laughs> fantastic fruit. Yeah. I can imagine. Is it grape season there right now? Grape season? Yes. I can show you. <laughs> we have so delicious grapes here. <laughs> different <laughs> varieties. And, yeah. <laughs> varieties, right? Oh, yeah, man. they are so fantastic. I think we had, now we have only three varieties left, but we, we bought around six different varieties and we have just been snacking on them and wow, they are so good. And yeah, oh, also this persimmon that they are so soft, so I can almost <laughs> not touch yeah. them. So yeah. we come in the perfect season right now. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Enjoying all the abundance in Italy. <laughs> yeah. So where are you now? I'm in Mexico right now. In Mexico, wow. You have probably also amazing fruit, I guess. Well, we are living in between the seasons right now. So we're waiting for the citrus season to uh, fully kick in, uh, but it's, it's getting there. Yeah, and we always have papaya, pineapple, bananas. Um, unfortunately, the mango season is quite short, so it's only a few months. I'm really yeah. looking forward to that again. <laughs> but yes, we have some good stuff here, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that is totally fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I really want to go to Mexico and and explore everything there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good place to be right now for sure. Yeah, I understand. So Victoria, that. I really love to hear about your raw vegan journey a bit. I don't know a lot about your personal journey, so in your book I read that you've been raw vegan for over eight years now. I'd yeah. love to hear some about that. Like, how did it go for you? What was your motivation behind that? And then we'll dive into some of the challenges you might have came across and me as well. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, my motivation to, to eat raw food is uh, that I really feel good with the diet. And uh, I have healed so much since. I have lots of digestive issues and uh, lots of inflammation. And I was sick. Um, yeah, uh, twice a month, and uh, and that was not so good because I I worked out as an elite badminton player, and um, I was also modeling, and my skin wasn't that good because I have like yeah some type of acne and very flat uh, here in the forehead and nose and here, so so it didn't work. So I I really felt that I had to do something and. I have changed my diet and I did it very slowly, so my results come slowly, but uh, when I got more into it, it yeah, my results come pretty fast. So, so therefore, I just I just want to stay with this diet. So, and I mean, fruit and vegetables uh, are delicious, and yeah, many people are missing out that because they eat like unripe fruit and they don't have enough variety and mm -hmm. they don't make like delicious recipes with salads, for example. And they think that it's only like fruit and salads, but it's so much more. We, we actually make recipes uh, like, yeah, in my book, uh, in the raw vegan bundle, I have, for example, raw vegan tagine and pad thai and, and different kinds of, of actually real meals. It's, it's so colorful and uh, delicious and, and just amazing. So the variety in this diet is fantastic. So, so yeah. my motivation to stay with this is, is really high. <laughs> Yeah, I've checked out your book and I already made one recipe, the Moroccan tagine. Oh, that was so good. Those yeah. flavors in there. And I think you really know your way around spices and herbs. And yeah. it really like threw me back to my holiday back in Morocco so, some time ago. 
and it was so good and authentic and at the same time so different right than the cooked like yeah. different kind of recipes we are used to so yeah ebook is amazing i love it like there are also so many like intercultural dishes in there and by the way uh victoria's ebook and also my new ebook cozy flavors her ebook is called spice of life and yes. they're both in the bundle right now. You can find that either below Victoria's Instagram account or mine. There's a link there. You can click on it. And the run bundle is fully raw vegan. There are over 50 ebooks in there, over a thousand recipes. Yeah, <laughs> and that's, that's just crazy. Of, yeah, and it's not just any kind of ebooks, but all from like people that know their way around raw food, right? Like long term yes. raw foodies. Some, a lot of them are um, holistic health coaches in there. And they, they know their way around food and make it delicious and still healthy. So you should check that out. It's an incredible deal. It's only for six more days, I guess. Yes. And, and uh, I mean, you shouldn't wait because uh, uh, I heard that last time we had the bundle, uh, the few days something happened with the site. So it, it was almost impossible to download it. So, so I mean, it, it's not that it can happen again, but... In case, I mean, in case if you forget, if you forget, I mean, this this will not happen again. This is just this is now. We have the, this uh, great opportunity to um, yeah to get so many different recipes. And I talked about variety. And if you if you find out that it, it's difficult to to vary the diet with raw food, you should really try this um, raw vegan bundle because, as you said, it's it's over thousand recipes and and uh, they are so different from each other because. Uh, the chefs that make the recipe, they are all over the, the world and they eat differently. And uh, yeah, I mean, some people are in tropical climates and me, for example, I live in Sweden. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it's totally different, uh, differently. Yeah. 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 Oh, so interesting. So how did you used to eat before you made that switch to raw food, that slow transition? Um, I used to eat like, yeah, um, like food that everyone else eats, like um, not standard American diet, standard Swedish oh. diet. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, so that uh, I have been eating that the whole of my life. And then I have been vegetarian a very long time, or I mm. always choose to eat like not eat meat because I, I love animals so much. But I still have been eating like milk and, and products that don't, yeah, that don't kill yeah. the animal. Uh, yeah. So uh, I've been vegetarian for a very long time, and and then I used to cut out more and more and more. So um, yeah, it's it's hard to say when when I go more to the vegan. Yeah, but uh, I think that I was actually <laughs> raw vegan before I went vegan, um, total vegan, because I still eat I, I eat like raw foods, but I, I have some cheese sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, cheese in the salads or. Um, Pesto with the pecorinos, for example, was pecorino cheese <laughs> was the best thing I, I know. So, so I have, yeah, I have switched very slowly. And then, then I just cut out all the dairy products and uh, I feel, yeah, I feel more clear in my head. And, mm. and uh, yeah, everything just got even better. <laughs> Did you experience any of, like, so, some people find they have, like, detoxification symptoms when they transition to a different diet. Did you experience any of those? Uh, not so much because uh, because I did it very slow, but but mm -hmm. sometimes uh, I can experience uh, like yeah, but it, it's hard to say what's detox and what yes. is something <laughs> else because if my if my digestion was just wow now we flush out everything I don't know what this is it if is it yeah. because I have eaten something or is it just uh, detox uh, because I have only been eating fruit a few days I, I don't know. Uh, but so easy sometimes. Yeah, not, not really hard detox symptoms uh, I have yeah. experienced, and uh, I think that it's good to not experience so much uh, detox symptoms too, because uh, a detox symptom is mean like, um, yeah, you you do something with your body that uh, that you you shouldn't. I mean, uh, the body should we should be happy and have energy all the time. So it's really important to find the balance uh, so uh, mm -hmm. so the detox symptoms don't take over. Of course, you can feel a little bit, but it shouldn't be like yeah, it take over yeah. it. Yeah, yeah it's because that, that that just makes me weaker. So you don't want to be weak. So that's why yeah. I really support you to slow to you do a slowly uh, slow transition. But um, yeah, of awesome. course, cravings can come up. So therefore. Like detox can be very good, uh, so you don't get like cravings and things. But I have just 
breathe through everything <laughs> with cravings and things like that and try to make more vegan versions of everything yeah yeah you said some really good stuff there so i also made the experience that doing it slowly is much more gentle for the body and this yeah. way the body like what is a detoxification system we have to ask ourselves it's, it's our body releasing a lot of toxins all at the same time and our lim eliminative systems like all the organs that take care of our elimination is not able to properly get rid of them and get them out of our body at the same time. So this way certain symptoms can come up and our body being overwhelmed is not the ideal state we want to thrive for. And if we go for a more gentle transition, most people feel that it's easier for them not to experience these kind of things. It can happen, of course, depending on where yeah. we come from, what we're doing, everything. Um, and yeah. But with this slow transition, it's easier for body to eliminate those toxins in its own time, not getting overwhelmed. And I also experienced that a slow transition was so much more comfortable for me to yeah. have with the meals and also emotionally, right? Like not yes, just exactly. like one day eating burgers, yeah. chips, and uh, mm -hmm. cakes for breakfast, kind of, and the next day having yes, just exactly. one of them or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, because going up and down all the time, it, it really yeah. weakens, weakens the body. So I think it's, it's very important to, to just, yeah, try to keep like stable all the time. Uh, that, that is best for, for aging and, uh, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. That's also something I often tell my uh, coaching clients when they are just starting out with raw food, doing like playing that, what you just mentioned, this elimination game kind of, like picking one food and slowly let go of that. Like, for you, it was very early on meat, and then you incorporate some more fresh fruits and veggies, and later you were able to let go of the da dairy. So, yeah. like taking one thing at a time, and if you want, you can be very systematic about it. Like cut out cheese, for example. And if once you feel comfortable with that change in your life, then you look for the next thing that might be not so supportive for your body. Maybe you, you then go for eggs and try to cut out eggs and slowly work your way up to more rock yeah more salads and fruit meals i think that is the way to to not want to go back also if you if you just go one day to another it's very easy that you just go back and go all in again so uh so yeah i really feel, uh, think that it's good to make habits and, and make them slowly and uh, yeah that is the best i think beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any other kind of challenges you personally came across? Well, this wasn't a challenge for you because you naturally or you educated yourself really well in the beginning, knew that the slow transition is the right, right way for you. Uh, any other challenge you personally came across in the beginning? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, sometimes it can be hard to find raw food. And uh, I have been traveling a lot and... Uh, um, in Sweden, I, I know where to buy things and, uh, and that kind of stuff. Of course, it's, it's hard to get like ripe fruit sometimes, but if you're not so yeah, picky with your taste buds, <laughs> you can eat like bananas, apples and, and orange and this. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> of course, it's more stimulating to eat like mangoes and papaya and this kind of food, but it's just, yeah, that's, that is how it is. It, it really works. But sometimes when I have been traveling, uh, when I was in Hamburg, for example, uh, for a few years ago, I was modeling and I, I was out of the country. I, I couldn't find anything, but they, it was actually in, in the persimmon season. So, uh, so these days I was there, I ate only persimmons uh, because that was the only fruit I could find that was, that was good. I mean, even bananas was, was horrible there. So, so there, I, I really have a struggle when I was there. And, and one day, I, I actually didn't have enough and I ate together with other fruits, with other fruit, with other uh, people. And um, so I actually ate uh, potatoes while they ate like potatoes and steaks, yeah. steaks and yeah, things like that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's also a really interesting point because if you like either don't know how you find good ripe fruits in terms of you just don't know what does a ripe persimmon look like or how do I detect if this banana is ripe or you just yeah. don't feel like you have access to these kind of foods if you eat unripe fruits it will impact your digestion in a negative way it will not taste good and it will also yes. not be satisfying on a like taste level but also on a nutritional level right because yes. we are supposed to eat them right and not like especially unripe bananas, 
just doesn't taste good. Like when I make a smoothie no. and I <laughs> either didn't check them well enough or yeah. I just didn't have any good at hand and was too lazy to go and get something new, <laughs> it just doesn't taste good. And I can imagine yeah, that. Exactly. Like, and you really have to plan ahead for it for you for it also so so you have like uh, like ripe bananas uh, at home and they should be like yeah with brown spots and, and things like that and, and a pretty soft to the yeah so so that is something i have struggling when i traveling around because the fruit that they are selling they are not ripe and i have don't have time to ripen things up either so so that's a that's a problem yeah 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 we have a question here um adam asked how important it is to go organic and we have another question from them if it's still beneficial to eat fruits and veggies that are conventional if not organic so i personally think it's still beneficial and we can do some like a few things to reduce the either the content of the pesticides that might be on there first of all yeah. there are like really good lists online i think the group is called EWG, you can find them on Instagram as well. They have two different lists. They're called Clean 15 and Dirty Dozen. And I think once a year they test like the most common fruits and veggies and leafy greens, any kind of fresh fruits for their pesticide content and make a list of those that are most polluted most of the time. They just don't that they don't just test one strawberry, but very different right to get an idea. And yeah. the ones that are most, um, they're a bit cleaner and less uh, polluted with those pesticides. So what I personally like to do if I don't have access to full organic, which is most of the time not the case for any kind of fruits and veggies. And I usually have an interesting mixture of some fruits I buy only organic, others I buy also conventional. And I like to use those lists as a guideline a little bit. And those that are high on the dirty dozen list, I prefer to only buy organic or not buy them if it's not necessary for my meals right now and the clean 15 list i'm more casual and flexible with buying those conventional and yeah this is something i do and you can also soak your uh, fruits and veggies in for example some veggie wash like there are organic solutions for that to reduce the pesticide content you can also use baking soda for example and soak it for maybe 15 minutes in there to reduce the content. You will never know for sure what's in there unless you test it, of course. But I feel that fresh produce is still so worth it, even if it's conventional. Yeah, I mean, it's better than eating cooked food, for example. I mean, some people I know that if they don't have organic fruit, they, they eat cooked potatoes, for example, and nothing wrong with potatoes, but, but um, toxins produce when you when you heat food also. So you get, I mean, if you eat like cooked food that is organic, you get other poisons like acrylamide, for example, because yeah, you have heated the product. So, so you, you will be like uh, eating toxins <laughs> either way you, how you do it. And yeah, I try to myself like buy the vegetables organic and, um, uh, and the fruit I, I, I kind of, yeah. I mean, I live in Sweden and organic food is never right. So, Ripe fruit is very, very important for me. So mangoes, melons, papaya, for example, I can buy them non-organic, but apples that have very thin skin, for example, I, I used to buy them organic. And, uh, okay. and uh, yeah, bananas, yeah, they have also thick skin, but uh, of ethical reasons, I, I really want to buy them organic. But I think that, yeah, if, if a fruit have a thicker uh, peel that you can peel off, it, it's a little bit better. But of course they have, pesticides in the soil so yeah <laughs> so it will be pesticides in the fruit but of course you can like so, that you said soak it in in um, in some veggie wash or, or something like that to get rid of the things that are, are outside of it yeah 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 i do the same like leafy greens is for me personally i always get them organic because i have the chance here to get them organic and if it for a short time i don't have access to organic i rather um not eat them. If I would live somewhere where it's not possible to get them organic at all, I would try to grow them my own. It would be cool. <laughs> but I yeah. would also like, um, opt for the conventional ones and wash them. But if it's only for a short time, I prefer then to um, focus on the fruits. But um, yeah, so I hope this was helpful. And back to the fresh fruits, actually, to the ripe fruits. You yeah. showed me a persimmon earlier on, and it's so interesting. 
I once, like when I was still living in Germany, I was eating persimmons when they were still crunchy. And I cut oh. it into my, back at the time in my oatmeal when I was more vegan yet. And I just didn't know, right? I just didn't know no. what a ripe persimmon looked like. And, and I mean, some persimmons is also astringent. So you get like very dry mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's not delicious. Like you think, like yeah, there's a tiny bit of sweetness. It was my favorite fruit back then. You can imagine. <laughs> and once I saw like a picture of the ripe persimmon, and when you're listening right now and you're still eating them crunchy, they need to be very gooey, like very soft and almost like bursting open when you touch them. Victoria has one there. Is that already? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are super ripe. Yeah. yeah. And then they taste like candy, really like candy. And this is so oh, important yeah. to you know if you have any fruit and you don't like it, check if maybe you are not eating it right, especially bananas, like should have brown spots on them. Otherwise, they're also not sweet. And even if you use them for smoothies, the texture is way off if you're <laughs> using them when they're unripe. So yes. get into that. If you have any kind of fruit you don't like yet, check if it's the right state of ripeness you're eating them yet. And, yeah, um, I mean, yeah. If, you, if you want to eat like uh, fruit uh, as a meal or you, you eat more of it, uh, it's very important that it, it's right. That you said, and you can feel in the texture because uh, a melon, for example, it shouldn't be like, uh, except for watermelon that is more like a vegetable fruit. Yeah, it, should be, it shouldn't be like crunchy. It should be it should be soft and and the mango for example it should also be soft and and it should be sweet. It's very important that the fruit is sweet because if it's not sweet, that means it's yeah it's unripe or or it will not fill you up. It will not make you satisfied. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I also find that most fruits, when they're ripe, you can peel them with your hand. Like it's yeah. easy for us to access the fruit and the fresh like sweet juicy uh, meat in there. If it's fully ripe, even like a banana, you cannot really peel it that well when it's unripe. And the same with a persimmon. You couldn't be able to peel it with your hands if it's unripe, but with the right ones, you can totally do that. So it's an interesting fact on the side. You yeah. also said something very interesting earlier about traveling and how to find your balance when you don't have like fresh good fruits available. And I find it really interesting your perspective on that to maybe even like go for some steamed veggies like potatoes in, um, in those situations when it can be really hard to find any kind of fruit. And I also made that experience that it's, it was very important for me to not get stuck in a perfectionism mindset, especially when you're starting out and learn so much about the power of raw foods and maybe even some of the disadvantages of the cooked food we used to eat because they can have um, also negative impact on our body. And you feel like, oh, yes, I'm doing that 100%. I'm full in. And then sometimes you might not have access to uh, fruit while you're traveling or you haven't just planned ahead, right? That's one yeah. point as well. And you're stuck there. I had it before. I was stuck in Manila in the Philippines in the city. And you think you get a lot of great fruit in the Philippines and you can but in the city, it was so tough. Like the supermarket, oh, yeah, I'm seeing like that. decent mango, and I was mono meeting on mango all the time, pretty much. But oh, no. after like four days, I was getting a bit agitated, and it was a little bit, it was a bit too much. <laughs> so yeah, I can also, see that. Yeah, <laughs> and I had been like at that point, I think I had been uh, fully raw vegan, like one hundred percent, nothing that was not not slightly cooked or roasted or anything in my diet. I was like very perfectionist about it. And I was like, no, I cannot eat anything that's cooked or go for anything else than those fruits. And it was really stressful for my body. And if you think about yeah. it, if this is a health journey in particular, stress adds so much like, um, yeah, stress on our body, right? Like it's physically, it physically hurts if we are on a lot of stress and it yeah. impacts our digestion. It impacts our immune system and so much more things. So I find that finding your balance and do what you can with the things you have at hand right now has been a really powerful lesson for me. And although I call myself raw vegan, I'm still okay with maybe having some steamed veggies when I'm flying on a flight and couldn't like prepare for such a long flight with that amount of veggies yeah. and uh, that amount of fruits. So I'm, usually eat 99% raw food and in my everyday life I don't eat cooked food sometimes I nibble on a tiny bit of 
steamed um, cauliflower, anything my, my partner makes, yes. just out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> but I usually don't crave anything else in raw foods. But in such situations, or you're invited to a wedding, I had that before. There's no raw food available, and you didn't bring something. Of course, you can always prepare for that. But in such situations, I like to opt for some steamed veggies and find my balance with that instead of like stressing myself out over these kind of details. Yeah, I mean, it's very important to find that balance. And for me, it's very important that the food is not uh, like something I think about all the time. I want food just to be another thing. So, so it should be easy. And um, sometimes, I mean, it's not so hard if I, if I eat something that, that have been heated. I mean, I would, I would not feel that good, not that energy. But at the same time, in the next day, I can start my raw vegan, <laughs> raw vegan uh, food again. And, and when I eat cooked food, I never eat a lot of it. I just eat a little piece of it. I mean, the, the, the thing that people do with bad is that they, they tend to overdo it. And, and therefore, they get problems. <laughs> yeah. So a little bit here and there, I mean, it's not a big deal. Uh, personally, I, I don't do it. But sometimes in social situations, when it's easier, I can do it, but I, I try to to prepare and uh, yeah and plan everything so I can eat the food I um, feel the best of. And yeah. sometimes when I like traveling and, and things like that, it can be very hard to find like raw vegetables and salads and things like that. So in restaurants, for example, instead of ordering a little small salad, maybe I, I take something cooked instead because Sometimes in recipes in in um, in uh, uh, restaurants they have like um, uh, meats and, and things like that. So so my raw vegetables wouldn't wouldn't be so clean and and therefore it, it can be better to to cook them so I don't get parasites and, and so on. Okay. So uh, you can really see the situations and when I can't find vegetables, uh, I always have sprouting seeds with me when I travel and that have helped me a lot through the years. Uh, sprouting yeah. seeds perf perfectly. Uh, they, yeah, you can you can just soak them in water uh, when you wake up, like mung beans, for example, and lentils and sunflower seeds, and that is my favorite combination. <laughs> and yeah. and then you rinse them in the evening, and then you can eat them the next day for lunch or for dinner or whenever you want. So so that is my really go for when I when I am traveling and uh, yeah. and always dates is with me. Dates oh. is simple. Yeah. And cucumber I can find everywhere. So eating days with cucumber, perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so interesting. Like fruits are the perfect fast food actually. And even if we are talking about sometimes it's hard to get stuff. Usually in most locations you can find some for fruits. Let it be bananas or dates are super easy to travel with. And it, when we talk about balance, just to get back to that for a second, I am not to say that the raw vegan lifestyle cannot be super balanced in itself, even if it's fully raw vegan. I personally experienced that it's balanced for me and I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I don't crave cooked food. I'm just saying that if you're starting out, balance can mean for you to still incorporate some cooked um, veggies, for example, especially in challenging situations. But this is also something we can plan ahead for, especially if you want to dive fully in and fully experience this lifestyle. And this is also something I learned myself from these experiences when we didn't have access to certain foods and were like going back to a few, just incorporating some few steamed veggies. That planning ahead helps me so much. Oh, and yes. Yeah, especially if you're traveling, but also like the everyday lifestyle, right? Like especially if you have your nine to five job and feel like you have a busy family lifestyle, maybe ha always having fresh produce at home, always having ripe fruits, make sure your fruits are ripening in a certain like schedule because for yeah. example, I always order boxes of bananas every week at a certain time. And now I find my flow and now how much I need over the week. And I always have some stored in a cooler place some stored in a warm place to write properly and some stored in the freezer so that I'm not running out. Sometimes it still happens, but then I have some backup foods. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's always good to have some backup, backup foods. I mean, I used to, to have things in my freezer just in case. I mean, uh, if I make raw burgers, for example, 
Uh, we have probably lots of recipes for things that is similar in the raw vegan model. My, my Swedish meatballs, for example, that is in the holiday book. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, these are perfect to use bulk up with when you make them and, and make huge pastures on them and then freeze them and have it in the freezer. Uh, and also like uh, some fruits you can also freeze and in case it's just good to have something in, in freezer sometimes and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you have a little backup, but the the goal should be that always you have uh, like uh, fresh ripened fruit. So that that is always the goal. But it's good to have some some different things too, in just in case, because I mean it's hard to to always have perfect ripe fruit that is just amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also recently just made some of the burgers from the bundle, and I made some beetroot falafel. And the potato patties from our chef's Yin's ebook. And I made like a usual batch, but I'm just on my own with my raw food thing. So I was freezing a lot of them and just take them out in the morning, maybe when I want them for dinner time. And later on, put them maybe in the dehydrator for a little bit to make them crunchier again. And it tastes like just so good, just like if I yeah. just make it fresh. So it's really easy if you want to have some backup treats treats that are a bit more exciting to add them to your salad maybe and yeah this has been something I've been trying recently and it works really well for me <laughs> yeah I, I can see that and and uh, there's so many different uh, recipes in the raw vegan bundle I want to try but I am here in Tuscan right now and I, I don't have any tools uh, to make Bye. food and and uh, yeah I am uh, on the more country south so so I can't buy so many different things so uh, so that is, so uh, it's challenging, but it's in a funny way. So, um, yeah, me and my boyfriend, we actually noticed that, ha, huh, we can still make some good recipes with no tools, no electronics. So, so yeah. we are actually going to make a, a raw vegan ebook, just no tools. And nice. uh, so, so, uh, that will be so cool. And also inspired by Italy, because we are in Italy. So we have made like pesto without tools and the, uh, and the raw vegan tuna and pizza, um, wow. and, uh, bruschetta. We make all the all this kind of food with no tools. So, yeah. So it would be so fun to, um, uh, yeah, to make this raw vegan ebook. So of yeah. course, in my profile, it will comes up when when it's ready. <laughs> Do you have a yeah. Huh? Do you have a blender? No, no blender, no, no food processor, no dehydrator, no oven, no, no electronics at all. <laughs> yeah, blender yeah. like was always for me like the basic thing which with which you can make so much, right? Like already yeah. you don't need the fancy stuff to make it really delicious. But that's a challenge. I'm excited for that ebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even one ebook in the bundle. Um, I think she also do, do, doesn't use any equipment. I think it's uh, um, Girl with the Bear. I think she's also not using a blender. So if you are, uh, have a very simple kitchen setup, I think personally blender, especially doesn't have to be a, an expensive high speed blender, but even have like a decent blender can open up a whole world of recipes for you. So yeah. you don't need a dehydrator, a juicer or a processor to make the recipes in there. Yes, some have those tools in there, but then you can also play with some alternatives. But if you have a decent blender, like there's so many recipes in there for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have a knife and a cutting board, you can make so much yeah. things with that. And, and if you don't have a food processor, you can finally dice everything and, and uh, have some time. <laughs> I also don't have a food processor. All I make, like I use my blender for that usually or cut it up real finely and that works. <laughs> Yeah, that's just perfect. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be like a little bit creative. So yeah, yes, you have to be a bit more creative then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So one thing that has been super important on my journey when it comes to overcoming the challenges, especially in the beginning, has been eating enough. Yeah. Eating enough while focusing on all the fruits in particular, because those are the ones that give us all that power and energy. And I feel like fruit and um, leafy greens and veggies are more like adding a nutritional power to our days, including sprouts, for example. But the fruit has been like a power step for me, like the most important thing for me personally to make this lifestyle work, eating enough of them and um, yeah, fully fueling up with them. And this has been 
very important for me to not have any cravings because cravings come up when our body feels like it's not getting enough, either not enough yeah. fuel in form of sugar in general or not enough in terms of nutritional, um, nutritionals like um, minerals, anything. Um, and of course, craving have, cravings have, can have many different other reasons, also emotional, um, but that has been the biggest biggest learning lesson for me when I have cravings it's usually because I haven't been eating enough that day and soon yeah. I found my flow with that and learned that this is like the main main thing for me to make this lifestyle ex actually sustainable and not just like a short cleanse or something like that yes yes exactly I, I really agree with that 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 it's important that you eat enough I mean raw food have uh, water in it it have fiber and it uh, yeah so that means that the volume of the food is much bigger than you cook food because when you cook food you get rid of both water and fiber or the fiber will soften up so the the quantity of the food is actually smaller so when you eat raw food you have to eat bigger quantities so um, that is something you you really have to learn and because it's like other ingredients than people might be used to um, they yeah they have to maybe <laughs> stretch out the stomach and, and think think a bit about different and and learn how much you used to eat to to feel full and um, and things like that so just try out and see and and don't be afraid to to eat like uh, five bananas I mean that is yeah. okay <laughs> it's not yeah. like uh, I mean people are used to one banana but so five bananas wow that is, sounds so yeah. much but it's actually not so much because you don't add the, uh, the other things to it I mean uh, when I ate like vegetarian, I used to eat yogurt and I have one uh, banana or even half a banana and then I have like uh, lots of toppings and things like that and okay, that's fine. But if you have like a meal of banana, one banana is, I mean, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you look at that, sometimes I see some uh, pictures online, the interesting comparison, how much calories you have maybe in a burger that's that size and then in terms of if you take the same uh, amount of calories in terms of bananas for example and you hold a bunch of that right yeah and it's interesting <laughs> to see that to understand we often have to eat more in terms of volume when you focus on fruits and raw foods and uh, then we might have eaten if we have cooked foods and it's nothing to be ashamed about to have like a ma massive bowl of an ice cream in front of you when the other people are just eating a small piece of bread yeah. with their cheese in uh, with them their uh, cheese on top maybe because in terms of calories, it equals. And um, I personally also realized, especially because I was restricting myself a lot before this raw food journey to keep in shape and to keep thin. And I was always feeling like I should not eat more and should eat smaller portions. Yeah. And that also messed up my um, relationship with food to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And once I dived into the raw food lifestyle and started to fully nourishing myself, with the right size of portions for my lifestyle, for my level of activity and everything, I felt that I could eat much more and feel satisfied and fully nourish myself, not holding back at all, just eating until I'm fully full and satisfied without stopping myself, of course. And I felt yeah. that it was so easy to keep in shape much more than before when I was trying to always like stay hungry and eat less and that was not sustainable. I was always like yo-yoing back and forth a little bit and not like always a bit hungry as well, which was so uncomfortable. And now I feel like I can eat as much as I want and don't have to restrict myself in any way and still get the benefits that I want from this lifestyle. Yes, I, I so agree with that. And, and that is so cool because I have heard so many uh, raw vegans that have uh, this type of uh, eating disorder. I mean, when they restrict themselves and when they start to eat raw food, it becomes very naturally how, how much you should eat. And, and when you eat like until you're full, you're, you're probably very satisfied. So, uh, so that is a very good thing with this diet. I mean, when you cook food, you really, it's like concentrate food. So uh, you have you have this little um, you have this hole in your gut because you have concentrated your food so much because we we, we need like uh, liquid and and enzymes and uh, and and oxygen to to also digest our food and and um, if we don't have this free part we don't digest our food so well uh, because we are dependent on acids that we don't have so 
that, that means that we, we can't absorb so much of the nutrients from, from cooked food. And therefore we start to craving nutrients. Uh, not even, I mean, craving can, can often be because you are dehydrated. So um, we, we start to crave like, yeah, uh, different kind of things because we didn't get the water and the nutrition we need. Uh, so that is a, that is a problem and, and therefore we start cravings. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cravings for nutrients and, and water. <laughs> yeah yeah that was also a part of my journey to understand that cravings can also be cravings for nutrients and yeah. if we eat for example pizza maybe you've had that experience before like not a raw vegan amazing vibrant pizza but those from back in those days the more conventional ones sometimes you feel like you're full but you are still hungry and yeah. that's not a hunger for more fuel in terms of calories that's like a nutritional hunger because the meal you just had might not have given you all the nutrients that you uh, that your body needs and this is also when i incorporate like i early pretty early on i started to make very big salads and incorporate more like leafy greens and veggies that helps me a lot to not have any cravings for cooked food as well because i feel like mm -hmm. i'm getting everything i need in there and my body is fully satisfied on a calorie level and in terms of how much fuel i need to do all the things i love in my life but also yeah. on a nutritional level. And um, there was actually a very interesting question I got earlier um, on the question sticker in my story. Somebody asked how we could get enough B vitamins and zinc. And this is also something that plays into it when it comes to eating enough. Because when I take a look so now and then, I like to like track my calories and nutrients just to get an idea if I get everything because my diet changes a little bit over time with the seasons and everything. And it's just a nice guideline to um, ha have a look at that now and then. And when I check that, my B vitamins, I usually like, I get most of the time 100 or 200% of what I need with the raw vegan life. So not even like trying so hard, but just with my usual m meals, right? And that yeah. usually comes from bananas, greens, um, some seeds, um, celery juice is also something that fills up the B vitamins for me personally. And the same for zinc. If I eat enough, like if I would eat 1,500 calories per day, which is not much for me, it's like I, that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. happen. Usually I eat more than 2,000 and I feel good with that. And if we eat enough, it's very easy to fill up those nutritional goals yeah. and get everything we need. When we don't eat enough on this lifestyle, it's really hard to get everything. And then it can, of course, uh, we can run into some issues in the long run. Um, so this is also something why eating enough has been really important for me and um, proven to make a lot of sense, especially in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, uh, with B vitamin and zinc, uh, B vitamins, they are actually destroyed, mostly of them, when they are heated. So you get more B vitamin when you eat raw food. So many raw foodists, they start to experience better nail growth. I, I did it myself also, and also better hair. Uh, and that's because you, you, you actually get more B vitamins in uh, to your body because, I mean, um, yeah, if you cook things, it's, it's destroyed. So uh, zinc, for example, uh, that can be a little bit more tricky. And zinc is very dependent on, on the gut flora, uh, and that is also B vitamin. So if you have a problem with zinc and B vitamin, uh, especially B vitamins, actually, you can get deficient in the, if your gut is not functioning so well. So... Uh, so that is very important. And uh, with zinc, uh, you get zinc if you, uh, if you sprout seeds or soak them. Uh, so that's, that's one reason I love sprouts so much, because you have the whole package. And uh, it's easy to absorb, and it's um, lots of minerals, uh, other minerals in there too, uh, that also promote um, absorptions and also enzymes that also do that. And, uh, and then you can also eat more greens. Uh, greens are lots of zinc in it too. So we don't recommend all fruit diet. We, we eat vegetables also. And that is very important to get, to get the whole picture of, of everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, like it, with fruits, it can be very easy to learn to love them because they're sweet, they're juicy, they're delicious just on their own. But sometimes people struggle a bit falling in love with greens and veggies. And this is where I find that really great recipes come into play and can be so helpful for that. Because I used yeah. to struggle with that as well. Like I had to go through the trial and error because when I started the roving path, especially for you, you've been roving for over eight years now. 
I bet it was like very scarce when it comes to like good recipes out there. And we just had to try and learn from our mistakes, like learn how to make a really good salad sauce, learn how we can combine the veggies to make a delicious salad or raw vegan dinner, and especially learn how to make those more exciting dishes like raw vegan burgers or pizza to treat ourselves once in a while with those like fancier dishes. And I find it can be so helpful to look up to those people who have done it for a very long time and learn from them and just use their recipes. They've tried them for so many times and learn what works for them and what is satisfying for them. And this is why I love the bundles so much because there's so much in there from so many people all around the world from different stages in their raw vegan journey. And you can find so many great recipes in there without having to trial, go through trial and error yourself and eat yourself through watery salad dressings or tasteless <laughs> uh, veggie mixtures. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right from the start. Yeah, I mean, it's very important that the food tastes good also. So it's it like, yeah, so it, it can be a bit stimulating for you when you eat. So, so therefore, a salad without the dressing can be, I, I mean, I am so used to it. So I like to eat like vegetables yeah. right uh, as it is. But, but most of the people, they don't enjoy that so much. So therefore, it's very important that you have like dressings that taste amazing or, um, or different other things that you can add to it. So yeah, I really agree with that. <laughs> yeah, especially like I, like when I discovered how delicious raw food can be, I didn't want to go back. Like, of course, the benefits were also nice, more energy, mental clarity, all these kind of things we uh, get from yeah. raw food. But I also felt like this is so delicious. Why would I want to go back to those cooked meals that even felt a bit less flavorful for me at that time when I started diving into all those amazing raw flavors? And when you really love the food, you won't want to go back and you will be able to make this a sustainable lifestyle for yourself. And um, yeah. yeah, I find that very powerful and I'm still like exploring so many new recipes every day, even after four years I've just made burgers I think for the second time in my life and it was amazing and even like oh. those comfy emotional foods when we have those cravings and don't feel like we can deal with them at the moment it can yes. be helpful to make healthier versions of that make a healthy raw vegan pizza make healthy burgers you can even make like a healthy nourishing um tagine for example as in yeah exactly right that was yeah. so delicious <laughs> Try new things so, and uh, yeah, yeah, just play around, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what I also found out with raw food is that that uh, it's very hard to uh, to like not success with it, but because if every food tastes, I mean, good on its own, when you combine them, then nothing goes bad. I mean, it, it should be good. It's, yeah. Okay, well, you can uh, overdo some different spices, and uh, and that can be not so delicious other way, but. But if you just base your diet on fruit and vegetables and you can play around with recipes and uh, if you make like burgers and it's carrot in the burger, you can have beetroot in the burger instead if you want. Or if you uh, like not eat pumpkin seed, for example, you can take some seeds. Uh, you, can, you can really experiment around with what you have at home. And that is something I really like with raw food. And that doesn't always work with cooked food, actually. So uh so uh, yeah the abundance uh, is really is huge how you can vary the food and uh, play around with it without uh, uh, it's not going wrong <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing yeah and especially if we have like that's also a good point finding like high quality produce not just in terms of ripe fruits but also on greens and veggies it makes such a difference like i for example get my greens Right now, I'm really lucky I found a local farmer. He works with permaculture uh, principles and he delivers every week fresh greens to our house. And it just tastes, you taste the difference. When I remember how maybe spinach used to taste when I was buying it at the supermarket or somewhere else, maybe not even organic, it doesn't have those kind of complex flavors in there that I get from these here. So it really makes sense if you want to dive into the lifestyle to look around in your location and find places where you can good, get good high, high quality produce for a price that matches your budget. And maybe even ask around at the local farms and farmer markets. Maybe they can even send you like big amounts for a better price. 
so that you always have like really good produce that you love and that makes it easy to make those delicious even when they might be simple and not as complex as some of the fancier dishes taste really yeah. good and satisfying so yeah that's something i'm very grateful for that we have that here that option and can make it so easy yeah i, I so agree with you and the uh... And really try out and um, uh, on uh, and buy things on different places and see what you like most and and also uh, don't be afraid to to buy things you you don't recognize. I mean, if you find a new vegetables or a new fruit you never have tried, just try it and 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 see how it is. And maybe you can also ask if you can have a, a little small piece or something. When we were around and shopping uh, here in Tuska, for example. Uh, we have been asking, uh, excuse me, can I try this little uh, tomato? And, and they say, okay, you can take, take a tomato. And if it's good, I can buy it. And if it's yeah. not, yeah. Uh, I go to, to, to something else. Or, uh, yeah, and the same thing we have done with Greek. So, so uh, yeah, try out things and, and see what, what you like. And, um, and, yeah, don't be afraid to, to try new things. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And I also got a question before this live um, that was for this live and the question sticker that was about somebody um, that was craving cooked foods in the evening for its heat, like for the warmth. They wanted something warm and nice in the evening and were not so satisfied with their dinner meals. So, and I personally um, feel that when we create heat in our body through other ways, like movement, um, breathing exercises, c having a warm clothes on in general, like keeping warm, especially in colder climates. Yeah. And all the other things, like we can also use herbs and spices that are warming for our body. Yeah. You'll find a lot of those in Victoria's ebook, I guess, when I yes. remember correctly. And yeah. there are a lot of different things you can do to add a certain warmth and heat to your body without having those like cooked foods. And you can also warm up your meals, like especially if you feel like a raw vegan curry dish, for example, made out of cauliflower yeah. rice and like a spicy, nice sauce. You can put that maybe in your oven at low temperature or if you have a dehydrator, put that in there on a low temperature just to keep it, make it like lukewarm so that you feel you have that warm flavors, those warm flavors in there without having the negative impact of cooked foods and still like get the whole vibrancy from the raw vegan meal. And um, yeah, those have been my experience with that. And I also write a bit about that in my ebook, Cozy Flavors, which is an ebook for raw vegan in wintertime, where I'll give some more tips and tricks how to make it satisfying for you. It's a whole lifestyle thing because it doesn't always, yeah. make, it doesn't, it's not only about the food we eat, but also about the lifestyle we lead. But I'll have some great tips in there for anyone living in colder climates and feeling like, they want a nice pumpkin soup at the end of the day, which you can have raw as well. Yeah, <laughs> of course. But, um, feeling like they're missing the warmth from food. And um, do you also, oh, I bet you have a lot of tips about that as someone living in Sweden. <laughs> yeah. How has it been for you? Uh, I mean, if, um, if people say that they crave uh, cooked food in the evening uh, and not in the day, uh, it tend to, otherwise it is because you have been eating uh, too little calories uh, the whole day and, uh, uh, and don't get enough calories and nutrients that you need. Uh, that is the most common thing, I think. But, but it can also be like you, uh, you have some emotional things going on because what you want is probably non, uh, nothing that is warm. It's probably more like something is grounded. So... Um, for example, if you um, take a raw food dish and, and heat it to 42 degrees, you might, be, you might not be satisfied because that food is so, so easy to digest and, and uh, that makes you more in your head, that you're more awake in your head. So what you want <laughs> when you crave cooked food is something that calms you down. Um, so um, so, that is so that is something emotional. So... Uh, so Maybe nuts and seeds and more fat can help with that too, because it also puts energy to digestion instead of energy in your head. Um, but it's not like you shouldn't eat too. You should not eat too much nuts and seeds and too much fat in your diet. So, so uh, it's probably not the cooked food you crave. It's probably more like you have something emotional going on. So you want to put your 
your energy more to digestion instead of the head. That sounds weird, but th that is how it works because uh, if you only eat like fruits all the time, uh, the whole day, you, that is also something that is very, yeah, in detox, for example, you go through emotional things. And that is because fruit is very easy on digestion. So, um, uh, so therefore your, your gut will, will have a break. And when your gut have break, the rest of the body works. So the brain starts to working. And if you have emotional strongness, you, you start to feel that even more. So, um, uh, so that is my tip if you have like cravings in the evening and still eat enough calories on a raw food diet and have this cooked food cravings in the evening, you should really look what is it uh, with me that I want to, yeah, to, to ground myself with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also when you are very stressed and very tired, you, you tend to, to your search for more energy and, and energy that you have in um, uh, cooked food is, yeah, it's very fast energy. So uh, it's like the sugar is, the, the sugar really affects uh, the blood sugar more. Uh, so uh, you get a, a kick when you eat it. So the, it can be like you, you just are tired and need a little kick or even dehydrated. You are dehydrated and need more water. So, so try to drink. You can drink warm water too, uh, or tea or something. That can also bring you down a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. my tip. That's beautiful. Like I always like, I especially like your explanation about when all the energy is focused on digestion, we cannot think so clearly. And that's interesting because that's also like a powerful positive benefit of raw foods, right? Because it gives us so much more mental clarity. And it also feels like it heightens our emotions because there's more space for that. And this yeah. can be a beautiful, positive thing where we I experienced that myself. I was dealing with depression before that for many years on and off. And once I dived into raw foods, I felt so much more bliss and more intense emotions positively. But it can also be a struggle if you facing some emotional challenges you don't feel like you can handle at the moment. And then you want to go to cook foods to numb that. So, but as Victoria said, there are beautiful other ways to find that grounding in our life. And um, this could be through more grounding foods. I also find that some root vegetables, for example, can be more grounding, like adding some ginger or beetroot, carrots, these kind of foods to our deep meals. But it's also like such an emotional journey. And those moments yeah. give us a beautiful opportunity to face our emotions, work through them and grow from them instead of just numbing that, what we often do, and I have been doing that in my past a lot of times, to numb myself or um, give myself joy through foods when I didn't find it in my life. And that can be a dangerous cycle because we are getting stuck in our emotions to a certain degree and are not moving forward. And I think we are here to grow and evolve and yeah. um, become exactly. like, like evolve in our personality, but also in our health and lifestyle. And um, yeah, therefore, this is a beautiful opportunity for us to look into those emotions and see where they're coming yeah. from, work through them. And also when you, when you find balance in your life uh, outside food, if, you, if you're happy in your relationships, if you're happy with your job, and if you uh, have interests that you are doing, say, play um, football, for example, <laughs> or, or maybe, yeah, you have interest in your life, uh, that makes you think less about food, and that also makes you uh, eat, yeah, it's easier to eat, like, healthy food, uh, because that is, uh, the, the food, it becomes a um, smaller part of your life uh, when you, you really have love uh, around you, and and uh, you're really passionate about, about your life and what you're doing and your interests. So, so that is also a tip if you really like craving cooked food or craving fat food also. Uh, or, uh, yeah, so, so start to think about what else in life do I enjoy? Or what, and what else in life is important for me? Am I happy with, with this relationship? And, uh, yeah. Uh, am I worried a lot? Am I stressed a lot? And it's so many things that, or am I sleeping a lot? Sleep is a huge oh, <laughs> thing. Yeah. Here too, so. oh, yes. <laughs> and movement also. So, so the whole picture is very important. Therefore, I used to uh, not call the raw food uh, a diet or it's more like a lifestyle because mm -hmm. you have to see the whole picture to really feel good. 
and um, yeah, you can't eat raw food and, and hate your life and, and, and think that raw food will, will heal all your problems because you still have all the other things in life you had to take care of. Yeah, it certainly makes things like it makes things so much easier for me and helped me on so many levels, health wise, but also emotional and mental. But it's also we also have to uh, take like keep the whole big picture in mind and not forget about the other things in life that bring us joy and fulfill us. That was beautifully said, Victoria. It was such a lovely conversation with you. And I hope everybody got a lot out of it. I think we had some really yeah. powerful tips and inspiration in here. And if you are ready to start your raw vegan journey or even level up your raw food lifestyle, You'll find a lot of practical tips, guidance, meal plans, um, health insights, and along with all those amazing recipes in the Raw Vegan Bundle, you can go to Victoria's Instagram page or to mine and click the link down below in the bio. And you can check out all the contributors that are in there and all the 50, over 50 ebooks in there. Right now, you can still get it for $50 altogether. The usual value is 3200 so you get a discount of I think it was 90, 98%, which is pretty incredible. So check yeah, it out before really. it's too late. And Victoria, anything final to say? Oh, uh, I will just thank you so much for, for being here. And uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm very happy with this conversation. And, and we have really talked about important things. Oh, so, yeah. uh, so yes. Thank you, and, and I hope all the, the people that are watching this will, will be more inspired and uh, go to the Raw Vegan Bundle and try and, and see all the ebooks and try different recipes and learn more about health uh, because it's not only recipes in there, it, it's so much more. Uh, so, so take the chance now and, uh, and make, a, make a change in your life. Yeah, that's, that's what I had to say. And uh, we have uh, the link in our uh, profiles in my profile we, you can find the link for the roving and bundle and in your profile and in, in everyone's profile actually so yeah. it's different links but so you, you can choose who you want to support but <laughs> yeah we are so happy we work in a team I mean uh, yeah uh, so we have different books but we have we really want the raw vegan community to grow so so therefore all the books are together and we sell them so cheap that it's just incredible yes. <laughs> yes. thank you so much for that i hope you all enjoyed yeah. it and Victoria, thank you so much in Italy. Thank enjoy you. all the persimmons and grapes yay and i will see you guys soon bye bye thank you